Judson's other large town, Aalborg, can be said to have something of the quality of Copenhagen about it, a gay, lively place which should on no account be omitted from a tour of Jutland. The lookout tower is the best starting point for a visit to Aalborg. On one side lies the town centre and harbour, on the other the countryside. Local industries include textiles, cement and tobacco, while Aalborg's distilleries produce the famous Danish schnapps. The harbour is Denmark's second largest, handling nearly 200 different exports. Its shipyards build these sturdy vessels employed largely in polar waters. Ten shipping lines use the port. A boat leaves for Copenhagen every night, while in summer there's also a day service. Spanning the harbour is a road bridge, which carries the heavy traffic going north to the port of Fredrikshafen, with its ferry services to Norway and Sweden. This is one of Europe's trunk roads, the E3. It forms the best link between Germany and northern Scandinavia. Shopping in the centre of Aalborg is rather a different proposition. Fortunately, the traffic is very well regulated. The Goose Girl is Aalborg's best-known statue. It was presented to the town by the local tobacco manufacturing firm of C.W. Obel. One can also sit and watch the world go by from the little terrace belonging to the Hotel Phoenix. This looks like a fairly substantial meal, but it is in fact only a Danish breakfast. Meal times in Denmark are very elastic. While the children tackle this late breakfast, at the next table an early lunch is being served. It's usual to start with a dish of open sandwiches, accompanied by a Danish lager. At another table, they are having mid-morning cups of coffee, followed by a cigar. But the younger women, as a rule, prefer cigarettes. Aalborg is proud of the fact that it has more open space per inhabitant than any other town in Denmark. Another distinction, shared with Copenhagen, is the possession of a pleasure park. Its Tivoli is, of course, not quite as large as the Copenhagen one, but there's certainly much to be said for spending an evening exploring its wonders. seven the curtain goes up at the big open air theatre. And so, leaving the Tivoli with reluctance, we return finally to the centre of Aalborg, where the shop windows offer plenty for us to admire. southern end lies the town of Sonderborn, looking out towards Germany. On a hillside above the town stands the best-known windmill in Denmark, the Dibol Mill. It's preserved as a national monument, commemorating the tough resistance of the Danish army to invading German forces in the 19th century. Sonderborg is another town that's growing fast, without losing its pleasant character or the beauty of its wood-fringed beaches. In the Middle Ages, it was an important stronghold, and it still possesses an imposing castle. Here, King Christian II of Denmark was imprisoned for 17 years. 
Today, Sonderborg Harbour is a magnet for yachtsmen from many countries. Every year in July, a modern form of tourney is held in Sonderborg. Farmers from all over the south of Jutland assemble to compete in a sport only to be found in this part of Denmark. Each man has 24 tilts at the ring. A number of competitors score 24 bullseyes, and the eventual winner is found by progressively reducing the size of the ring. The contest is spread over three days, and in the evenings, next to the tilting ground, there's a fairground to visit, with enough sideshows and roundabouts to keep everyone happy. The most beautiful part of Jutland is probably the area around the town of Weiler, which stands at the head of the Weiler Fjord. The town is an important tourist centre and possesses one of Denmark's most modern hotels, the Hotel Australia. Nearby is the popular Munkibier restaurant, with a splendid view over the fjord. It can be reached by a moving staircase, said to be the longest in Europe, the restaurant standing 300 feet up among some of the finest beech woods in Denmark. This family is housed in Weiler's attractive little zoo. To the north of the town lies one of Denmark's national parks. It can be explored on the way out to the village of Yelling, in whose churchyard are two very ancient runic stones. But the churchyard itself, like most in Denmark, is well worth visiting when the roses are in bloom. One of the runic stones bears an effigy of Christ, the oldest in Scandinavia. It was placed here in the 10th century as a memorial to Denmark's first king and queen. Up till 200 years ago, Heathland covered nearly all Denmark. Now the heaths have become highly productive farms. In the north of Jutland, a few miles to the south of the town of Skiba, there is a remarkable open-air museum dealing with the early history of Danish farming. It also preserves a small area of Heathland. For a fortnight in July, this all becomes a living museum, and one of the best exhibits is undoubtedly the unique Stone Age village. <laughs> Also an expert basket maker. From basket making in the Stone Age, it's only a short step to brush making in more modern times. 
the exhibition is largely concerned with life on the heaths and farms at the beginning of last century. All the buildings in the exhibition village have been brought from different parts of Denmark. This mill comes from near Weiler, but the Danes have left the era of water mills far behind. One of the country's biggest agricultural shows is held at Herning, a town in the centre of Jutland. winners are shown off in the ring to the accompaniment of an informative commentary which gets frequently interrupted. Today the horses have the ring to themselves. The cows will appear tomorrow. So now they're taking things easy. One farmer, at any rate, is being kept on the go. The most famous family of pigs in all Denmark is this one, permanently established outside the town hall of Aarhus, Denmark's second largest city. These cherubs are to be found in front of the Aarhus Public Library. There's much effective modern sculpture in Denmark but a fountain from an earlier age stands in the square of the celebrated Old Town, another open-air museum built in the city's main park. Letters can be sent from this post office, thanked specially, so it gets a great many customers. Most people also like to have their photographs taken here. Perhaps this boy will go in due course to Aarhus University. Founded in 1928, it has 2,000 undergraduates. <laughs> 